All right. Welcome to the Rokani Media Football player ratings of Arsenal 3, Southampton 1. I'm really glad to obviously be talking to you at this kind of time. This is the fourth video of the day and we are really going to be uploading one three hours from now. It's really going to be very huge in here onto the Rokani Media Football. Smash like button, comment and share if you're watching us for the very first time. Endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Rokan David is my name. You can as well call me already onto this beautiful YouTube channel as we're really doing lots of things. Other teams that I hate to plan, I gave you the results. Man City won by three goals to two. West Ham won by four goals to one. And very many other teams really came up and obviously put in the required shift altogether and all was okay into the making. Now, let's see how things are really going to be panning out right about now into the mix as we discuss Arsenal 3, Southampton 1. Now, <clears throat> let's go to the player ratings. David Raya, he had really made one howler that would have gone to result into Arsenal conceding a second goal. But by the time they would have gone to concede, they would, it would have gone to be 3 2 because Arsenal had already gone ahead to score a third goal through <coughs> Bukayo Saka. So I'm giving David Raya a 6.5 out of 10 because literally he had nothing to do in that goal area, you know. He had nothing to do into that goal area and was really protected very well by the back four. Now, we go to Thomas Partey being played out of position. We all know it that the previous season <clears throat> from the Community Shield and the first three games, I think before Thomas Partey went ahead to get injured, the manager was playing him as a right back. You remember that very well. And there are rumors that Gabriel Magalhães, who was supposed to be playing into the central defense and was benched, and bench Wh Benjamin White had been pushed to play into the, um, the central defense, was supposed to leave. I'm talking about Gabriel Magalhães. And Patti really played as a right back for the first two, three games. And when he got injured, the manager really went ahead, obviously, get back to where he's supposed to be in there for you. And he brought back Gabriel Magalhães. And he went ahead, obviously, make his good partnership with Saliba. And let's all admit, this is to really make a very good combination, right? So, after that, Pate returned and he has always gone ahead to be played as a central attacking midfielder. Sorry, a central midfielder. But guess what has gone ahead to happen? They've gone ahead to obviously come up with a proper plan. And the proper plan is simple. They've today gone ahead to play him as a right back. Why? <clears throat> Tomiyasu had just gone ahead to return. And sorry, they came in and played 10 minutes. Then, the likes of... Um, the likes of Julian Tim and Benjamin White were really injured. The manager couldn't want obviously risk him into a game like this where he thought that he could really use the players are variable to obviously counter the side of um <coughs> the side of Southampton. So Pate a seven out of ten. Ricardo Carafiori for me he takes a seven point five out of 10 every day he continues to impose himself in the game how he tackles how he really runs with the ball his dribbles in and out of possession his shape is really very elite and remember he has just gone ahead to come to the premier league and he's learning on the job now i've i had the commentator referring to him as uh, the new paul maldini but let's give him time and see how he really evolves because they all had hair, same hair, and he really resembles him a little bit, and he comes in from Italy, and even Maldini used to play as a left back and a left-sided center back. So, let's wait and see how this will obviously take us to the real result of really getting in the best of the best that we are really hugely waiting for into this beautiful game of football. Now, Ricardo Carafiori, 7.5 out of 10. We go to the other player. Um, Saliba, 7 out of 10 for me. Um, Gabio Magales, 7 out of 10. I think they were not exposed a lot, but they did what they had to do. And for that goal, I think Arsenal was just hit on the break. And um, you don't blame him. You don't blame Gabriel Magales. You don't blame Saliba because Archer Cameron was really great and we went ahead to put in a very huge shift. And his finishing was really elite. You get? Um, we go to the midfield. Jorginho was played as a CDM. 7 out of 10, I think. He really did what he had to do, but he was taken off when the game was 1-1. And the manager was like, let me reinforce with three uh, players off the bench. 
and he was really given the best of the best um i'm giving him a seven out of ten declan rice eight out of ten i saw him really control the game well driving the team and even when uh toma and even when Jorginho was taken off he really went ahead to play into that position of the cdm and he really looked great in that position as a cdm so he takes an eight out of ten from me the other player that played in the midfield was um kai havertz who was let him move to the set to the focal point and i tell you what he really lived up to the occasion and in the midfield he wasn't really performing very well but when he was really put to lead the line you saw to it that he has gone ahead obviously become that lethal number nine for the club of arsenal one chance one goal and he really went ahead obviously scored the most important goal of the game an equalizer if southampton <coughs> is leading you by one goal to nil and in three five minutes you don't really level up they'll grow confidence that they can obviously take you for the ride and guess what happens you you end up really struggling you saw what happened last weekend when Arsenal was playing leicester city don't you remember when Arsenal was playing leicester city leicester city went ahead obviously level the game and it took us no close was it 30 minutes <clears throat> or 30 or 40 minutes obviously kill it off because they took long to obviously get back into the lead and that's why i tell you that kai havertz went ahead to score one of the most important goals of that game and few people will understand it and give this guy his flowers that he really deserves then <clears throat> the other um the other i'm talking about kai havertz for me he takes an 8.5 out of 10 from that game his performance was really elite you understand then we go to bokayo saka guys seven assists in six games seven assists in six games that is bokayo saka for you and i think he has gonna hit to score i think the second goal of the premier league because he scored i think in the opening game and put up an assist and the remaining games he has been really putting in assists but this time round he has gone ahead to find himself on target and he has also gone ahead to score a goal in there for you so that is beauty that is beautiful for the player and he's really showing what saka is supposed to be doing you know when sometimes you are being given the responsibility that you are the star boy of the team it has to obviously be produced onto the field of play you have to orchestrate it you have to impose yourself on games when your team needs you best you have to obviously produce a moment of more magic and you saw it today when his team needed an equalizer he went ahead to press and really stole that ball passed it to kai havertz kai havertz went ahead to hit it past aaron ramsdale one one and 10 minutes later he finds so 10 minutes later when arsenal needed to go to, into the lead he went ahead to find martinelli at the far post and martinelli went ahead to tap that ball in the back of the net and when they needed it obviously seal it off because southampton was like we can go for this game we can really find a chance and really level up it was like all right you want to level up saka took it by his own hands <laughs> and uh, went ahead to obviously put in a shift and really hit that ball and it went into the back of the net you get to make it 3-1 and arsenal really went ahead to play the extra time when they're really comfortable in there for you they've been comfortably leading there so saka a nine out of ten that is it a nine out of ten we talk of gabio jesus i'm gonna give him a 6.5 out of 10 i think dropping deep and releasing sterling was really okay but sterling was really very selfish you understand and um i'm giving jesus a 6.5 out of 10 that is it we go to sterling very selfish and that is one of the things that ateta has to get out of him because his fellow players are going to obviously play him in he runs into better positions he spaces himself well but when it comes to obviously <clears throat> having what we call a good end product of the game it's really lacking you get it's really 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 lacking and i just don't know how he's really gonna improve because most of the time has been like that and he needs to obviously read the runs of his fellow players and obviously make a very huge go into that games and how he really makes those decisions you understand that is none other than now um, that is none other than Sterling, and for me, Sterling gets a six out of ten. That is it. We go to the substitutes. Uh, he brought on three players at once. 
Merino Mikel, Martinelli, and Trossard. Let's start with Trossard. I'm going to give him a 7.5 out of 10. Guys, this guy is really one of a kind at Arsenal. And uh, 27 million pounds for Leandro Trossard was really an absolute bargain. And no one is regretting because in him, you have a versatile player and a player who is really clinical. He get he came on and he saw his impact. He his really energy levels are really high and no one doubts what he pulls up onto the field of play. So for me he gets an eight out of ten. Um we go to Mikel Merino. <clears throat> obviously, you cannot judge him in two games that he has gonna obviously come and play off the bench, you know, but we'll judge him with time. But when you look at how he's playing, he's really a pressure resistant player, very calm, and he is a fighter in that midfield, and his physicality levels are really high. So, today I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10 as Mikel Merino. Then we go to Gabriel Martinelli coming off the bench, bang, you know, into the back of the net, and he scored a very beautiful goal. Who was responsible for the assist? It was none other than Bokayo. Saka. So for me, Martinelli is really another one that really deserves to really get an 8 out of 10. And he has been consistent in the Premier League. Two games, two goals. I really love that from the man himself, known as... Um, I really love that. I really, really, really love that from the man himself, known as Martinelli. And I bet that... It's not good news for him that they are going to the pre into the international break and he's not part of the Brazilian national team because he would like obviously go ahead and play for Brazil and keep his form or keep sharp such that when they return to play against Chelsea and Liverpool, he'll obviously come up and obviously put in a very huge shift into the making. So I like it that way and I'm really impressed with what this guy has gone ahead of it obviously put up. Uh, the other player that came on <clears throat> was none other than um, um, Tomiyasu. Welcome back from injury. 7 out of 10 for you, Mr. Tomiyasu. The other one was Jakub Kivio. <clears throat> 7 out of 10, obviously coming on for Ricardo Carafiori. So those are the players that came on to obviously give this side a very huge boost. And a very good goal as far as this was concerned so we are waiting to see how things are really going to be panning out that side but here on to the rokani media football we've gone ahead to rate every player that came onto the field of play then we can rate the manager obviously his reaction you know when it was one one and it was like i'm bringing on three players to obviously tussle it out you know that was really brilliant of the manager and I give him his flowers so he gets an 8 out of 10. And who is my man of the match? Obviously, it's Bokayo Saka. For me, Saka is the man of the match. You understand? Saka is the man of the match. Two assists and one goal. Five finger salute to the lad because he has gone ahead obviously put in a very huge shift altogether. Now, we sign out for now. See you later, and I'm calling for your reactions into the comment section below. Tell me who your man of the match is. Tell me who you think really has been really given a low rating according to me. But you guys can come up and tell me into the comment section. I'll be eagerly waiting for your reactions. But continue to subscribe to see to it that everything really moves on as planned. Powered by Mono Gadgets. Bye-bye. Saka is my man of the match. Name yours into the comment section below. Bye-bye.